A world where society and technology decays, ever stuck in a senseless battle for resources. Technology either fading or lost in time. Not to mention that these worlds were either entering desertification or some sort of ecological abomination. No spacefaring vehicles dared to land on these types of worlds, except those unfortunate enough to crash on it. That is a rust world. A world of little hope and full of chaos. Those who live in the rust worlds tend to be more violent and will do anything just to survive their day-to-day -day lives, most of which will resort in pillaging and raiding others to fuel their own survival. Yet not all is lost to violence though. Some live peacefully in tribes and roam around the world to both forage food and let their animals graze on meager vegetation the world has to offer. Other tribes live in seclusion, living in caves, growing mushrooms, and occasionally fighting overgrown insects. Some even cultivated insects to produce food for their tribe's sustenance. And some sailed the perilous filthy oceans to live in islands to achieve peace. In a rust world that lies in the fringes of a solar system, a story is unfolding somewhere in the planet inside a deep cave. Two fugitives running away from raiders. One of the fugitives is a young lady bleeding due to the gunshot wound in her arm, while the other fugitive is a thin young man, unharmed yet exhausted. These two share a common goal, to escape their hunters. Slowly, they walked inside the cave, teeming with life which is seemingly strange to them but they too are a stranger to the cave as they walked further the young lady crumbled unable to keep up her knees weakened due to blood loss the young man quickly assisted her but something is afoot they hear faint damp footsteps closing into their position the injured tries to ready her banged up shotgun but to no avail still weak from the injury she took while the young wimpy man that accompanied her unable to move from the suspense as the footsteps draws nearer towards them its stature and appearance became clear it was a shaggy looking man wearing a tribal garment with a makeshift glaive in his right hand the man stares at them and assesses the situation, seeing these people are exhausted and injured. Quickly, he rummaged his primitive bag and took out his herbs, slowly approaching the two in a calm-mannered way. Dumbfounded by the tribal's generosity, the young man quickly grabbed the herd and tended to her injury, effectively removing the bullet and closing the wound. Expressing his gratitude, the young man smiled and shook the tribal's hand, leaving him a bit confused. But then the tribal points to go deeper inside a cave, gesturing them to follow him. Cautious yet desperate, the young man nodded his head and carried the injured with his filmsy arms. And then, he followed the tribal without question. They walked for a long time inside a cave. Slowly but surely till they saw a faint light. The light grew brighter the closer they walked towards it. Finally, they have reached not only the light but the other side of the cave. Well hello guys, Sickly Shogun here and welcome to my brand new series called Rust World. First of all, thank you for stopping by. And I hope that you can give criticism later because this is actually the first time I'm making these kinds of videos. So any criticism or feedback is appreciated. Okay, so now we're gonna start a new colony. Then we're gonna choose 
uh, Lost Tribe. I'm sorry, Naked Brutality. And then we're gonna choose Mr. Randy Random for the maximum drama. I'm also going to set the difficulty scale to 200% since I suck at this game and going further may end the story earlier. Also going to disable map generation ancient threat to match the lore of the story and everything else is all set. So we're going to adjust our world to match the setting of a rust world. First we're gonna adjust our overall rainfall set to below normal and temperature set to above normal and population set to sparse. Well, a bit above sparse actually. Then remove every faction except Feral Clan and Gentle Tribe. Everything else is just flavor to your gameplay if you're going to use the mod list. I personally recommend you adding Gentle and Savage Tribes for an eventful gameplay. And this is our Rust World. First I'm gonna do is select random site to maximize the storytelling. Set the ideology system to inactive, then meet our colonists. I've already pre-made them but judging my skill, they're still gonna die. The group arrived at the Lone Mountain and decided to settle in there. Itsuki notices Rebecca's wound open up and decided to aid her immediately while Sabertooth dismantles the ruined tables for extra steel. After tending Becca, Itsuki decided to sow seeds that they will survive this year. In a distance, Sabertooth spots a herd of camels far from their camp. They decided to sow some seeds while Itsuki sleeps in the sandy dirt. The uneventful day ended with Sabertooth and Itsuki sowing seeds in the dead of the night. The sun rises and Becca was able to walk. Itsuki is still sowing at the break of dawn. Becca rendezvous with Saber to hunt some camels. Albeit slow to walk, she still can aim her shotgun at the general direction. Considering Sabertooth is a tribal and is only proficient with melee weapons. The two hunted together, with Sabertooth going further first, waiting for Becca. Becca finally arrives at the hunting grounds and takes aim at the creature and felled it with one hit. Sabertooth quickly ended the creature's life and carried the carcass back home to butcher for materials and consume its meat. Becca, broken, wanders in the desert aimlessly. The day ends with two new constructs finished, a bed and a well. Itsuki takes over the night, sowing more seeds to ensure their survival. In the middle of the night, Sabertooth broke and psychotically wandered through the night. In the break of dawn, Itsu was still sowing seeds, starving. Later in the morning, Becca initiated a hunt alone, seeing Sabertooth was not himself. Surprisingly, the camels were still in the same spot. Becca felled the one and ended the hunt swiftly. Because she doesn't like howling, she left the creature in the wild, letting someone else haul it later. Still, she made herself useful by sowing seeds while Itsuki is still asleep. At the end of the day, Sabertooth still wanders psychotically while biting off the animal's carcass. He finally snaps out of it, taking a swig from his water bottle before collapsing. The day was greeted with a distant thundering of both hooves and human feet. It was a caravan from the kinship of Gale. Sabertooth looked at them and stopped washing his hands to look at Kamarev's goods. He immediately tries to sell the camel hide and peruse the caravan's goods. But the only one item that catches his eye was the Prometheum and only he can afford five pieces. Sabertooth then finishes the deal. The caravan lingers for a day, 
If only someone can tell them off, it will be a great relief. They decided to move inside the ruined building later that day. Itsuki was forced to hunt due to Rebecca's goju's addiction getting worse. With sand on his shoes, Itsuki gets close to the camel, with the shot echoing through the night. The day starts with Becca casually talking to Sabretooth regarding what should they call themselves. Sabretooth decides to call themselves Fugitive's Refuge and that this settlement should be called the Lone Mountain, fitting since they can only trust themselves. Nothing really meaningful happened that day except a lot of deconstructing and food poisoning. In the night time, Sabretooth was hunting despite the initial food poisoning. He skillfully struck the iguana with one hit and ended the hunt swiftly and butchered the iguana. With their best miner still down and out, Itsuki was forced to mine the steel vein until daylight broke. Early morning, Becca decided to go to the well so that she can refill her water. But she immediately broke down and decided to insult Itsu and then collapsed. Seeing his acquaintance down, Itsu decided to carry her to the bed spot and decided also that he should get some sleep. Everyone at this point is experiencing starvation with Sabretooth nibbling the last piece of meat. In the night, Sabretooth salvaged materials for steel so that they can finally create a research bench as Itsuki suggested. On the fourth day, everyone was starving. Sabretooth finished the research bench as Itsuki mines. Rebecca, still halfway through recovering from the Goju's addiction, Nothing really happened that much throughout the day, except Sabretooth hunting the last iguana. The iguana tried to bite, but bit the dust instead. Before dawn break, Sabretooth had to hunt since the colony was starving. Little did he know that the one that he hunts is an air fleet that explodes upon death. But all Sabretooth knows that he must fight off his hunger and must initiate the hunt. He charged and struck the air fleet with one hit, which causes the air fleet to burst into flames, setting Sabretooth on fire. Itsu heard his screams and rushes to his aid. By the time he arrived there, Sabretooth was suffering from severe burns and immediately put out the fire. He carried Sabretooth back to his bed and tended to his burns as quick as possible. Later that day, a sand prowler tried to hunt Itsu, but Itsu was prepared. With two shots, he fell the armored beast and ended the sand prowler's life so that they will use its remains later. He cuts up the sand prowler to use its chitin and meat and fed not only himself but the others as well. While feeding, Itsu notices Sabretooth's wounds had festered and immediately tended the area. At noon, they heard a spaceship crash but did nothing and slept through it. After Itsu slept, he checks out the crash landing. He sees the survivor but ignores them, taking the human corpse from the spacecraft instead. Itsuki knows that they are desperate for food, so he cuts up the corpse and builds a campfire, so at least the meat is safe to consume. Still, he got poisoned. Rebecca, suffering from both severe malnutrition and goju's withdrawal, is still going strong because of Itsuki's careful planning. Sabretooth, on the other hand, is looking grim. His infection getting worse and must seek a better medical treatment. 
the day started with Itsu losing his mind. He decided to run wild. He ate the meal he made yesterday and slept on top of the Prometheum pile. With no one tending the injured, all that they can do is wait for the inevitable. With no one to tend Sabretooth, he succumbs to his death. But the story does not end there. Rudy, a man in black, happened to just walk by the settlement. He immediately went to Sabretooth's room to give him a proper butchery. He muttered to himself, to survive, nothing shall go to waste. Will this man be the savior of Lone Mountain or just another pebble in the downfall of the settlement?